Hi guys, so today, as promised in the last Q&A video, we are going to be talking about tips for video auditions and Zoom auditions. I know this, this is the year for that, <laughs> both for schools and for actual ballet jobs. So I'm going to give you all of my tips and tricks today as well as some video editing tips that can help you with the videos at the end because I might have a little bit of a clue as to how to edit a ballet class video. Just maybe. They're very, very easy and anybody can do them with any software of editing a video. So um, I've actually talked to Chris. He's teaching right now, but I talked to him before this to get his tips as well. So not only are you getting my tips, you're getting his from a person who works at one of the big ballet academies from his perspective because he is going to be doing some Zoom auditions and things like that. So right from the source. So the first thing I want to talk about is your setup. As we talked about in that Q&A video, your setup is very important. It is probably worth investing in um, some good lighting from Amazon. I'm using a ring light right now, which is very, very bright, and I got it for like 30 bucks on Amazon. I'll link it below, um, and it's very portable. If you possibly can, especially if you are auditioning for a company and are required to do a, um, a variation, it's really worth renting some studio space. You guys, don't try and film a, a, a variation in your living room. I just don't think that's gonna serve you well. Ballet schools are probably looking for ways to make money anyway. So if you just contact a local studio and say, hi, can I rent some space for a few hours? They're probably gonna be very interested in you doing that because that's income for them. And it's also a great space for you. Good floor, you know, plenty of room. It's worth doing if you're going to be doing a video. Zoom is another sort of different situation. If you can get a studio for a Zoom audition, great. Probably don't have to. Um, that might be a little bit trickier, especially with internet connections and everything. It might also be worth investing in um, some good flooring. We have a five by six Harlequin mat that I use to teach all of my online classes. It's very portable, rolls right up. I will link it below, but it's five feet by six feet. So it's a decent size, but not humongous. They have three different colors. Great, great flooring. I teach point on it. Again, if you are going to really be looking for a job, for you really want to get into a good summer program, it might be worth investing in these things, particularly if you're going to do more than one audition. Um, you know, you're not just buying it for one time's sake. This is a this is a good thing to do. Second thing, like I said in that Q and A video, is clean, clean hair, clean leotard, clean tights, no holes. You know, I would also maybe do a leotard that's one solid color, especially with me and filming YouTube. Sometimes flowers and lace, while it's pretty and fun and fashionable, yeah, um, it's not exactly the cleanest on. A camera or on a two-dimensional screen. Now, when I film those bars for you guys, I'm not auditioning. We're having fun and I want to wear fun leotards. If I was auditioning, I would do solid color in a leotard that makes you feel good, you know, clean tights. Um, I don't know if I would wear a skirt on a video audition. Honestly, you guys, when you are a small screen and it's flat, the skirt can actually chop you up. A little bit and make you look a little it can kind of distort your proportions um, I have found that I sometimes to be honest in filming look thinner without a skirt on because it's longer instead of out hip skirt chop you know what I mean like black black pink or blue black pink or you know three chopped sections of color if you are gonna wear a skirt make sure it matches your leotard so I would do black black and black white and white pink and pink long line the more you color block chop yourself, the shorter you look. That's why most dress codes are black leotard, pink tights. It's kind of a, that's always a fail safe. Zoom is sort of the same thing. Don't chop yourself up too much. However, on a Zoom audition, wear a color. Wear a color on a Zoom audition. Um, unless it specifically in the instructions says black leotard, pink tights, make sure you read your instructions. If there's no instructions, I would wear, personally, red, a bright blue, or something like that. Red or bright blue, because your boxes, remember, on Zoom. And if they like you, oh, where's the, where's the girl in the red? Oh, I liked the girl in the blue. You're easier to spot 
on Zoom if you're in a color. Same idea though, don't chop yourself up too much. Red leotard pink tights, blue leotard pink tights um, for, for lines purposes. This, this would be a great color to wear on Zoom. Bright, solid scene. So you're not blending into the background. That's another tip for a color. Whatever your background is, if you're at home, wear a color that's not in the background. Wear something that makes you stand out on Zoom. So the next tip is solely for video auditions. It doesn't apply to Zoom. If you're having to submit a video, whether for a summer course or a job or any other thing, Chris and I both said this. This is his list too. So clearly this is something you need to listen to. Do your research and give them exactly what they say. If it says, do this, 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 and this, do that, 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 and that. It's like I said in the Q&A, it is a test to see who can follow instructions. I'm gonna put up an example on the screen. I've got it on my computer, but I'm gonna put it up on the screen. So this one says, I'm gonna take you through it. This is an example of what would be required for a video audition. Complete bar, only one side necessary. So what that means is you don't have to do every combination on both sides. So only show Plies on the right, Tondi's on the left, Degage's on the right, Ranajam on the left. However, little tip, I would not only show one side. If I'm the auditioner and I see you submit a video that where you're only doing your right side, that's a little suspicious to me. Well, clearly they didn't want to show us the left. So what I would do in filming this one, I would still, while you're at the studio or wherever you're filming, film a complete bar, film on both sides. That way when you get home, you can say, okay, which one looks better? Because even though you may think your right side is better, you might actually like the left better. Oh, I'm a little bit squarer on that side. Oh, and my technique's better on that side. So even if they only want one side, film both, but only submit one. You see what I mean? That way you have options. And make sure you alternate. Make sure each combination is different. You can also kind of plan it out ahead of time. Okay, I really like Adagio on my right side. My right leg goes higher. My arabesque is better. Whichever. Make sure the combination before is on the left, which usually is something, something like frappe, which doesn't really matter anyway, honestly. Um, <laughs> so do frappe on the left and Adagio on the right, if that makes sense. But film both, and I'll show you how to edit in a second, but film both just so you get home and have options. Now, center floor work, this one says Adagio, Pirouette, Small Jump, Grand Allegro, and Men, Grand Tour, Tour and Chant. Um, For this one, I would do, you're gonna be tired, but I would make sure you film two takes of everything. Again, so you have an option. So when you get home and you're looking at them both, going, okay, which Adagio was better? Don't go home with only one good take on all these things. I'm telling you, you guys, Speaking from experience, having filmed a bar or two in my life here on YouTube, it's nice to have options. Because sometimes I get home and I'm like, I only did that once and it looks terrible. And if, you know, it's on YouTube, whatever. But if it's an audition, I would be sunk, especially if you've rented a studio. If you've rented a studio, maximize your time. Make, have more than one take. Do bar on both sides. Go home with at least two takes of everything. Pirouettes, make sure you show both sides. Sorry, they want to see you turn right and left. Make sure you have a combination with um, pirouettes, both on the or on the done and on both sides. Have some sort of combination. And guys, I'm going to tell you this right here, right now. Feel free to steal any of my combinations. If you have no idea what to do, go on here. I'll put it in the card. Look at my bars and steal everything I have. I don't care. That's why it's here. If you want to do one of those pirouette combinations in your audition video, please, my gift to you. If, if you're unsure of what to do, use my stuff. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. Um, that's why it's here. Small jump, same thing. Both sides. Grand Allegro, both sides. Um, men, tours. Point work, if applicable. That means if you're on point, obviously. I also would advise you guys that if you have not been on point um, for more than a year, make sure you note that. To them in the video or in the email because if you haven't been on point for at least a year you shouldn't be doing relevés and arabesques pirouettes on point or a diagonal turning combination quite frankly and they won't expect you to so make sure in your video somewhere in your email somewhere that you say how long you've been on point especially if you're not including point combinations it's really important um, if you have to do a variation make sure you pick a variation that suits you 
For example, if you're not a turner, don't do black swan. If you're not a jumper, don't do, I don't know, buy a dare um, gamzati. Like just <laughs> pick something that suits you. So for example, if you're a turner, black swan is great. Um, third Odalesque Corsair is great. If you're softer, Beauty Act 2, Don Q Act 2, um, Dream Scene. Um, you know, if you have some cuteness to you, Talisman, you know what I mean? Like figure out your personality, do your research, find a variation that suits you and go for it and own it. Don't worry about if there's not a hundred pirouettes in a variation. If you're not a turner, don't include pirouettes in your variation. <laughs> I'm telling you, do something that shows you off to the best of your ability. Um, and that is why renting studio space is very important. Just do your, you know, do your due diligence, wipe it down afterwards, sanitize, do the whole thing. Um, and if you are renting a studio, you guys, in filming these videos for auditions, give yourself at least two hours. That's the minimum. Because this takes longer than you think. I'm down to a science with my bars. Now it's like, I don't even have to think about it. I have my system and one of my bars takes me at least an hour to film and that's just bar. So I would give yourself two at the minimum for this. Three if you want to, you know, pay for the three hours even if you don't use all of it. Peace of mind. Peace of mind is priceless. So give yourself at least two hours. So one more thing about video auditions. If you're going to rent the studio space, if you're gonna bother filming these things, make sure you go in with a plan. Know exactly what combinations you're, you're gonna do. You can do that at home. Make sure you have an idea of what you need. Make a list. Okay, I'm auditioning for this school, this school, this school, this school, and this school. Figure out what they're asking for. But if all of them are asking for relatively the same things, for example, a bar on one side, or a bar on both sides, or an adagio, a pirouette, you can use the same video for every one. You don't have to come up with a different bar for SAB and PNB and ABT, and no. Use the same combinations. Just make sure you filmed everything you need. Then you can kind of cut and splice into what these schools want. So you don't have to do a separate filming for every audition, especially if you're sending a video. Does that make sense? So let's say, I'm gonna use an example. Let's say SAB wants bar on one side, pirouette adagio and ABT wants bar on both sides, pirouette adagio and jumps and pick somebody else wants bar, point work and this and that. Film a complete bar, send them what they want, film the adagio, it can be the same for all three, film the pirouette can be the same for all three. You see what I mean? If you go in prepared, you won't have to film 18 different classes for all of these places. Just do your research first, make your little lists, and go into the studio prepared to maximize your studio time. Okay, next tip, both from Chris and from myself. He just literally just said this to me, <laughs> which I already said to you guys in the other video. Don't hold back. Make sure from the second they click play, you are present, you are alive, you are giving it everything you have. Because remember, they can fast forward, they can skip, they can go, eh, boring, next. Just because you film a however long video doesn't mean they're gonna watch the whole thing. Just like me here on YouTube. However long this video is, doesn't mean you guys are gonna watch the whole thing. I have people click off all the time. I can see in my analytics how long people are watching videos. And let me tell you, attention spans are short. They're very, very, very short. <laughs> so make sure Everything you put in that video is your absolute best. You are present, you are alive, you are using your upper body. Don't do bar like this, especially if it's only on one side. You need everything for a video. Um, and remember, it's kind of like on stage, you have to exaggerate a little bit. This on a video doesn't read as well. As the, do you know what I mean? Like extra and big and alive. Capture their attention. Show them who you are. Don't be afraid to shine. Why are you hiding? Why are you saving? The great thing about videos, you guys, speaking from experience, you can film it again. <laughs> you can go, that was bad, let's do it again. It's not live on a video. So make sure you give your all and that video shows exactly who you are with your artistry, with your technique. Um, you know, don't, don't get nervous because you can film it again. 
If, if you're not happy with pirouettes, guess what? It's not like a live audition. You can do it again. <laughs> so that's something to really, really, really be aware of. Okay. Now, a couple of tips before I give you my video ideas um, of for Zoom auditions. Sort of the same thing we've been talking about. Be alive. Be present. Clean. Um, really listen to what they're saying. Be prepared for things to get weird. Bad internet connection. You know, delay. Zoom auditions are going to be tricky, even if everything goes perfectly, because you might not hear what they say. You know, like you just really hone in on what's happening. Make sure you have no other distractions. Maybe if you're doing a Zoom audition from home, if you have a pet, ask your parents to lock the pet up, you know, just for that hour or two. So the dog's not walking by and distracting you and then you've missed the combination. Problem. Yeah. Um, we know that if Luna was here, it would be, you know, if, if I had to do a video audition, I'd lock Luna and Dixie up because it would not be good. <laughs> so um, make sure you just have no distractions. Put your phone on Do Not Disturb. You know, have everybody in your household be aware that a, an audition is happening and ask them, please, for the next two hours or however long it is, to please respect the fact that this is really important. That kind of thing. Just be prepared that Zoom, one little distraction, especially from teaching, can throw you off. You cannot know the combination. You cannot know where you are. And it'll it'll fluster you, especially as an audition. So just kind of minimize distractions if you possibly can. Um, pay attention. And again, you're going to be a two-dimensional screen. So bigger, alive, reach. You know, if there's 18 million little boxes on the screen, I'm going to, my eye is going to catch the person really doing this, not the person who blends. Sort of like the leotard. Don't blend, right? Upper body, big, use it. You will catch their eye. Obviously, still use good technique. But when you're a small box like that, um, you know, you've got, you've, got a, you've got to make an impression. And that's how you do it. Show them alive. Before we get into the video editing tips, which I'm going to show you in a second. One more thing that Chris wanted me to tell you guys, and he is absolutely right. You need to be ready for this year, no matter how many videos you send out, no matter how many Zoom auditions you do, to have all of them be no's. And it has nothing to do with you. It has to do with we are in the middle of a pandemic. We're all in the same boat. We are all in this place right now. Ballet companies financially are suffering. Ballet schools financially are suffering. And especially if you are looking to get hired for a job, the biggest chunk out of the ballet company's budget are the dancers. The dancers are the most expensive part of a ballet company. And so the way companies are going to save money this year is by not hiring and sticking with who they have even for another year. Well, we don't have our max or we don't whatever. And <laughs> we're just going to stay because the fastest way to save money as a ballet company is not taking on any new hires, even if they're low core. So you need to be mentally prepared for that this year. Jobs are going to be very scarce. Spots are going to be very scarce. And know that it has absolutely nothing to do with you. Same thing with ballet schools. Reality of the situation, guys. I don't know if we're going to be back to normal. Probably, I guarantee we're not going to be back to normal by summer. And a lot of the big schools, what's going to happen is they're going to offer summer spots to some of their year-round kids. That well, we don't want them to travel. We're just going to, you know, that's what happened. I saw it happen last summer a little bit. Ballet West, just use an example. They had a lot of year-round kids stay because they could not go elsewhere. So you also have to be prepared that summer intensives are not going to have as many spots this year. Um, they're going to want to take a lot of students to increase money, obviously. But you don't know if your round kids are going to take that spot simply because they won't be able to travel. So there's all these factors that have nothing to do with you in terms of you as a dancer. So just be prepared this year to, to not have it go wonderfully. And it's awful and it's unfair and it's we're in this bad situation, but we're all in the same boat. We are all in the same boat across the board. So just do your best 
you know, give it 150% every audition you do, every video you send out, and know that, you know what, I did my best, and that's what counts. So try not to, I know it's so hard, but try not to take it personally this year. <laughs> also try not to take it personally normally, which is hard enough. But this year especially, there's gonna be so few spots, particularly if you're looking for a job. And that's just the way the world is right now. Um, so just be aware of that. So now I'm gonna show you some editing tips for ballet videos. I don't currently have a bar on here, but what I'm gonna do is I still have my, um, when I just posted the little improv and the Sleeping Beauty variation, and that's in a studio. So I'm gonna show you little tips on how to make these videos look even better. Now you can't cheat a video, it's not gonna change your technique, sorry. But I'm talking about lighting, I'm talking about smooth, I'm talking about good editing, and these are very simple tips and you can do them on you know, any video editing software. The free one that comes with the Mac, which is iMovie. I have Final Cut Pro, which is the big one. You can do this pretty much on any video editing software. So let me go ahead and record my screen. Here's the video that we did, the, the improv and the fairy. Okay, most of you are gonna have to have an intro, obviously. Talking, da 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 da. Hi, I'm so and so, I'm 18 years old, and da 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 da, and then you go into the ballet. Okay, first tip is for lighting. So I'm going to show you, let me take this back to um, as is. This one's actually not bad um, in terms of lighting, but I want to show you how we can make this better. So let's put me on a good place here so I don't look funky. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to go up to this right here, which is the color. Again, different video editing software might be a different place, but you want to find color board or somewhere where you can change exposure, saturation, color. So this is what I do. First one I do is actually color curves down here. There's two different ways to do this. See this, this is curves. You can even Google, you know, help and just type curves and it'll usually show you. Now, see this, this is Luma, right? Watch this bar right here. I'm gonna raise it slightly and watch, watch me on the video. Raise it, we can make it brighter or we can make it darker. See, that is one way to cheat your lighting. So sometimes I will make things a little bit brighter and then if it makes it too bright, I'll come down here and click this other button and bring this down to get better color contrast. See, look, that's too much, that's not enough, but we're just gonna go right there. See, and then the before and after, before and after. So that's one way to cheat your lighting. Now, we can do it the same way, go back, to color board. If, you're, if your editing software doesn't have that, somewhere you can find exposure. And we can take the, the highlights up a little bit, or the midtones up a little bit, see? Or this down a little bit to give a nice contrast. Or you can do the whole thing, but sometimes that doesn't work. So play around with your exposure, and that can help kind of cheat your lighting a little bit. I do it on every, every video, I do it on this one. I just bring up the exposure and the contrast, just a hair. It, all it does is just sort of makes it brighter and a little more, um, everything pops a little bit more, especially if you're in a studio. Um, so that's, that's a huge difference right there. So let's go back to the color curves and I wanna actually put that back on. Okay, see how much better that looks? Yeah, no and yes, no and yes. So that's the first thing. You can also play with the saturation. I wouldn't do too much of this. I mean, colors, you can make it more colorful or less colorful, um, you know. I don't, I sometimes play the saturation, not really. Sometimes in the studio I will. Um, this one too, if you have this color button, if, if you have a really green kind of studio and you want to lessen the green, you can, you know, play with that. That doesn't really ever, it's not really a big thing for me. Sometimes I'll lessen the green because some videos film really green. But okay, so that's how you cheat your lighting. So now let's pretend that I want to show you how to make your videos look very, seamless and how to make nice transitions between like plies and tendus and degages so it's not so choppy. This is what I do too. This is how I do it. So we're gonna pretend that this one right here, let's say this is plies and then fairy over here is tendu. So these are your two videos you wanna link together. You've got them in here and you're happy with them. I come over here to transitions. Do you see this cross dissolve? You can find dissolves on pretty much any editing software. I'm gonna drag the cross dissolve, put it right in between, and look what happens. It dissolves. If I didn't have this, 
Look how choppy it would be. See, that's not really interesting. But I add the dissolve, and it just flows. So you can dissolve between combinations. That's what I would do. I've edited students' audition videos before, and that's what I do. I dissolve in between each combination so it flows. And they will appreciate that because it shows you made effort. Okay? Um, the only other thing I do that I don't want you guys to do because it takes a while, which is what I did with this, is I overlaid the music to make the music sound better. You don't have to do that. It takes a long time. Just use the music you have in the studio because then the sound will sync. Sometimes I've had bars on here where the sound doesn't sync and you guys are like, you're off the music. It's because I take the sound out and put it back in. Um, so don't worry about that. Just use whatever sound you have in the studio. But if you fix your lighting like this, and if you fix your transitions in between everything, it's gonna look like a beautifully put together video. And that's why I say film options so that when you import them into your computer, you can pick and choose, you can move around, and then once you're happy with the takes you have, then you just put the dissolves in between, you fix the lighting, you're good. The only other thing I would say about your, your bar videos and such is make sure each combination is one take. Don't do halfway through plies, cut to another take. That's very obvious. Beginning to plies to end of plies should be one. Beginning of tondus to end of tondus should be one. Don't do like, oh, well, I looked better on the first take of this pirouette and then the second take of this pirouette. Needs to be one long take so they can see you how you are in reality. So the last thing I would say is with editing tips is do your, your intro, your classwork, your variation. At the end, I would stick on another little thing just like this. You can use your phone and say something like the following. Thank you so much for your time in watching my audition video. Uh, once again, my name is Katherine Morgan and I'm 32 years old and I look forward to hearing from you. Do you know what I mean? Something like that. Just right at the end shows you have a, a start, a middle, and an end. And that way, even if they make it to the end, they can see that you've, you've done that. That's what I would do. And again, you can put it on the end, tag it onto the end, put the dissolve, dissolve from your last combination into your little outro. Thank you so much and blah, 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 blah. And you're good. Don't overcomplicate it. Don't overcomplicate it. That's all you need. I know this is a really long video, but I feel like this, especially this year, these tips are really important for you guys. So I hope this helps you. Um, again, feel free to use any of my combinations you have on here. I, that's why they're here. You know, teachers as well, if you're watching this, if you get stuck, because Lord knows I get stuck teaching in class about what to do, <laughs> please use my combinations. They're here for free for you guys. So you don't have to come up with a single thing if you don't want to. So anyway, if you missed that latest Q&A, it's right there. You can click it to watch. Love you guys so much. Good luck with those auditions, and I'll see you next time.